One of the main topics I'd like to focus on in um, the video this week is tomatoes and tomato harvesting and getting these tomato plants ready for fall. <laughs> what we really want to see now is these tomatoes blushing up and turning red and ripen so we can pick them. Now there's still a lot of growth up here at the top, but anytime we have, you know, flowers up here, these flowers will definitely turn into fruit. But I live in a frost zone where my first frost is the beginning of October. And if I'm lucky, I can get into the middle of October. And since a tomato is a tropical plant, a tropical fruit, those aren't going to ripen in time. So instead, we want all of the energy that the plant is trying to focus on making more fruit, we want most of that energy to go down and concentrate on getting those fruits to ripen. So this time of year, even though it hurts, we're going to try and and redirect that um, energy. So we're going to just cut off the tops of these fruiting branches. So, and I'm gonna go along and do all of that. So what I have left is still going to produce fruit. Now here's a cluster here. There's only one on this and nothing else looks like it's going to um, try and, and fruit. So I'm just gonna cut those spent blossoms actually out. Um, let me see. Here's one here that's up here. Now it is rather small, but I think we still be able to uh, get that get this one through to harvest. I think a tomato could take anywhere from you know 30 days on up to go from a tiny little bud area to a full-grown tomato. But anything that's up here, those aren't going to make it. And we don't want that energy to go to that. We want it to go to ripening the rest of the fruit that's on the vine. So I'm just going to cut that one right off. Here we have, you can see I've cut that one off. And so the energy is going to get these to full size and to ripen. So I'm gonna go through all of my plants. If you can see this one here, this has got a little one on there. I think, oops, there it is. I think we're just gonna leave him, but we are gonna cut off the one that's behind him and we're just gonna clip that one down. So now I do have a lot of decay on some of these. I will be coming along. You've got that leaf spot thing that's going on all the time. I'm going to, I'm constantly coming through and cleaning that up. That's really important at this size. You don't want anything that is in the way of your ripening tomatoes. If you have tomatoes that are, are totally uh, concealed within the foliage, cut that foliage out and let them have full exposure if you can to the sun. That will help also in the ripening process. I have more of the heavy foliage on this side, which I'll be getting into. Um, I still have lots of tops that I gotta have to cut off. But that, even though that sounds very severe and you hate to do it, the frost is coming. Um, I would love to be in Maryland or Virginia and have a little bit longer growing season, but that's not what I have here. So I'm going to have to help my plants along to produce, produce what they need and be the fullest of what they, they can produce. There we go, cut a couple of those things off. See in this particular one here, we've got some up here. I don't think we need those. I'm gonna cut that off. Here's a group here even though there is a tiny little, if you can 
see that a tiny little tomato on that that would never come full circle to grow up to be a, a fruitful tomato so I'm just going to cut that off I could probably even cut this one back a little bit farther because there's nothing else on that that branch now as far as my little candy lands I'm just going to let those babies go because they ripen they they fruit very quickly and also my grape tomatoes I'm just going to keep letting them go and I'll just let the frost kill them whenever it's time so that's kind of what I wanted to pass along in the tomato department and if you're growing tomatoes good luck or if you're thinking about growing tomatoes for next year keep all this in mind come back and rewind the videos and go through them next year when you you get to this point in time so good luck I'm out here in the garden this morning doing a little watering and here's the ground cherry that I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for one to fall down on the ground this looks like possibly okay so you split open the papery shell and there you have the ground cherry okay well I thought maybe I ought to get this one on tape never had one before mmm sweet little sweet not too sweet um, it has kind of a consistency of a cherry but not so juicy a lot like the tomatillo but sweet kind of nice looking for more to come here's my radish experiment remember i let some radishes go to seed and now the pods have been turning brown and so that means that the seeds are becoming ripe inside they aren't too stiff they're still a little bit pliable so the seeds i think are still forming and i'm not going to touch them i will be planting more radishes but i don't think i'll be using these seeds i want them well cured and i'll use them in the garden next year we are spaghetti squash bed lots of weeds in here but they seem to be doing okay. They're still producing. Um, we did harvest one and had it for dinner this past week. Um, doing some research and the best way of harvesting and storing these long-term. Not gonna process them, I'm gonna be storing them whole, but I'm not quite sure the best method to use. I have a number of them. Across the aisle in the next bed is the Walla Walla onions, the sweet white onion. And um, the tops have knocked over on a few, so that means that they are, um, it's getting close to time for harvest. My leeks are growing fine. <laughs> Uh, those I could actually harvest at any time. They aren't that large, but they'll go right on through the fall, even through frost, frost and into the winter, and I can even harvest some in the springtime. But anyway, onions might be the next harvesting uh, vegetable that I get to. Here I am by the cantaloupes, and we've got some little ones that I put in these little mesh bags to tie up so to get a little bit of support plants are rather straggly but they are doing much better now that they have some more sunlight this guy gets a yellow bag and then there's another one down there small we'll see how big they get next year I've got something else planned for cantaloupes if I decide to make them right behind the cantaloupes I have some shade cloth this is to protect those small little baby lettuce seeds and help them germinate. Don't think I have any germination going on yet because I just planted them a couple days ago. But this should protect 
from the high temperatures and it will help reduce the evaporation in the soil. You saw the picture of the carrot harvest. I still have yet to harvest this little patch of carrots. I should be able to get a, a good deal from here. And I'll leave that in the ground for another week or so. Um, across this other side, I have some small carrots just peeking up through this bed. Hopefully I'll be able to get a harvest of maybe baby carrots. So cute. So, Bean Arbor has, is on the decline, but the Annex beans, you can see some lots of growth, lots of flowers. They've been starting their their production right now. So um, I'm going to rely on this to get more and more beans and kind of kind of let the, the bean arbor in the other place. Here as part of my fall garden plan, I had a lot of uh, pest damage on the zucchinis, but looks like they're starting to make a good comeback. Here's another one. Lots of new leaves. I'm keeping it dusted with DE. That Solano grape tomato is still cranking them out. I have more on these uh, Genovese tomatoes and some of those plum regal tomatoes are doing fine. If we come over to the pea bed, you can see that I have lots of germination, lots of peas starting to come up now, now that things have gotten a little bit cooler at times. So keep that watered. You can see the shade cloth is doing fine. I've got um, <clears throat> germination of the lettuces that I planted under the shade cloth. Don't really see anything in the spinach department except maybe that, but time will tell. Um, I've got another small one here that looks like it might continue to develop. These are looking a lot better now that they have more sun and keeping them well watered. You can see my tomatoes over here. They're blushing up and reddening and I'm continuing to do more and more and more sauce in the kitchen. So we have lots of peppers starting to turn red. I can pick them as green and I have picked a couple that are you know half and half and I've started to freeze those for use later on. Um, tons of the nata peños, which I'm going to start picking shortly. Uh, candy lands, oh my goodness, those babies never stop. There's always something going on in the garden, whether it's good or bad. My cucumbers, I have no idea what the problem is. They seem to be doing fine up here. I have started a new regimen. I've given them some more uh, feed, more fertilizer, some fish emulsion, but they do seem to be suffering quite a bit. I'm still getting a good deal of cucumbers on them. So I'm just gonna let them go and keep, keep producing what they can produce and see if I can't help them along give me some more in, in the harvest department. It's a question. Hi all, welcome to the question and answer period. While I'm sitting here in, uh, actually standing here in my bean arbor, and I'm back up against the vineyard, I just wanted to zero in on some of the the luscious grapes that we have going on here. Those are the reds, Frontenac reds. And across the aisle, those are the Frontenac grease. 
Uh, we've checked the bricks, which is the sugar measurement of the grapes. The reds are um, almost at 20 and the whites are still at about 15 or 16. Now it looks to be that we may be picking at least the reds next week. So maybe in next week video, we'll be able to show some grape stomping or something like that. Anyway, so the, the looks like a, a nice crop of um, our grapes and uh, we'll keep you posted on, you know, how much we get and what's it gonna look like. Anyway, so I um, had one question this week and it was from Nora and I'll insert the picture here. Okay, this tomato has a crack in it. Now, Grammy has a lot of those tomatoes with cracks in it. This is something that happens when you get a lot of water at one time. The tomato just, the plant just takes up all of this water and has not had time to expand the skin enough and it will just crack. Now, usually at that point, um, the the tomato is fairly ripe and you can you can pick it. Um, just cut out the cracked part and you can still eat it. But it's usually because of um, a great influx of rain. Now I've had that when we've, uh, because we've had little or no rain and I have been watering kind of consistently every day, but then we do get rain the day after cracks usually appear in the tomatoes. So what you should do is if you listen to the forecast and you keep your eye out on when rain is coming and if you're going to have a large amount of rain, pick any tomatoes that are close to being ripe. Now some tomatoes you don't know whether they're going to be ripe or not. I mean, if they're green, and they do have green tomatoes, uh, but if the tomato is still green, then you aren't going to want to pick it. But if it is red or blushing red, um, and you think maybe it is, feel it just a little bit. The skin could, should give just a wee bit. And that usually means that it's close to ripe or it is ripe. But if rain's coming, pick those and let them further ripen indoors, you know, in a, in a cool, cool and, uh, shady spot so it, it won't then crack and you'll have a blemish free um, uh, tomatoes so that's the question and I thank you Nora for bringing that to my attention and I did not um, uh, mention that in previous videos so it's a good thing thanks so much Dan had a question for me. I just inserted the picture of the Hungarian heart tomato that weighed in at a whopping one pound, 14 ounces. And he wanted to know if this was the largest tomato. Well, yes, it is the largest. I've never grown tomatoes that were um, supposed to get huge. Um, these are, um, exceptionally large ones in the garden this year. So um, maybe next year I'll have some other varieties, some slicing type of varieties that kind of like a beefsteak that I'll try and see how big I can grow those too. But yes, Dan, that was the biggest one that I've ever grown. Okay, so I hope you got a lot from this video um, series this week. Um, uh, more coming next week, probably more in the harvest mode because that's what I've been doing. I've been canning and, and freezing, freezing lots of beans. I fre froze beets. I froze carrots. I probably have, oh gosh, 20, 30 packages of carrots out of that harvest that I made, that I did just the other day. You saw in the picture. Um, 
Of course, tomatoes are ongoing. I pick every single day. Something else is ripening, so I'm um, boiling down sauce. I'll probably give you a short video on how I actually do my tomatoes, um, and if anybody's interested. <laughs> um, just a quick tutorial on um, how I make my sauce. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you just stay tuned in just a minute or two, you will find out who the winner is.